indigenous tribal groups make up more than 8% of India's population. These groups have preserved elements of traditional lifestyles that are close to nature. They have been the custodians of the environment for centuries. Before the terms ecosystems, biodiversity or even nature were coined. Recognizing their important role as custodians of the unique ecosystems of the Western Ghats and taking advantage of new opportunities such as the passing of the Forest Rights Act, CEPF grantees have been supporting indigenous tribal people reaffirm and gain recognition of their links to places and resources and strengthen cultural and economic ties to nature. Their stories illustrate how conservation is a social process for and by people. This is a valley in the foothills of the Nilgiris. We are working intensively with four tribal communities. The largest are called Panyas. Uh, then we have the Betakurmas. Then we have the Katanaikans and finally the Molokurmas. The CEPF project is a part of that work that we are doing around the implementation of the Forest Rights Act for the Adivasis of the Nuglur and Bandarur Talukas. And to build up the capacities of the tribal Gram Sabhas to be able to implement the act and to access their rights on their own. Perhaps the community that is most dependent on the forest are the Katnaikans, because they are very dependent on uh, honey. They used to collect a lot more NTFP from the forest. This is an area where there is a lot of non timber forest produce, especially medicinal plants. The Panyas are dependent on the forest, uh, both for food, they collect numerous tubers and leaves and plants from the forest for their uh, food. The biggest problem we first faced was lack of knowledge on the part of the government and apathy on the part of the government as well. After the passing of the Forest Rights Act, this entire dynamic has changed. What the Forest Rights Act has done is now put power in the hands of the communities. It has shifted the entire process of power of managing forests from the sole control and purview of the forest department to communities. One of the primary right is the right to the land which they are cultivating. The second right set of rights are called community rights. The community rights is where as a community they can exercise rights like for example to collect honey, to collect other non-timber forest produce. The third set of rights is the right to conserve. Now, under the Act, a community can declare a certain area of forest as a community forest reserve, where they have the right to manage it. The first level is training our own accord uh, team of Adivasis from all the different areas and from the different tribes. So they have been trained and are very well versed with the Act. Training for the community has been with the community at large, but at the village level, and this training has been done mainly by the animators themselves. The primary outcome, I would say, is the building of the capacity of the Gram Sabha leaders. The second outcome out of this would be a very, very increased awareness of the responsibility of the tribal people for conservation. Not just to see it as a land rights act or as an act to give them rights to take things out of the forest, but recognizing with their uh, rights come responsibility. The CPF grant gave a very, very clear focus and thrust to the forest rights work that we are doing. really interesting landscape because it's got a huge uh, amount of biodiversity and all the different kinds of forest types that are found in India and uh, importantly it's also got very in interesting indigenous communities who live very close to these forest areas. 
We are trying to understand forest areas, rivers, different kinds of biodiversity, um, sitting a little far away in institutes or colleges and campuses, whereas we've not really given an opportunity to take on board the observations of local communities who live closest to biodiversity. Barefoot ecologists are people who we define as local people who have been trained in field ecological methods. And we've taken this definition a little bit higher to say that they're also people who participate right from the formulation of the question to the collection of the data. Our aim was to get um, local people involved in monitoring the health of the forest and to record and take them through a process of learning how to record their observations and document their observations. The data that uh, has come in from the barefoot ecology work is about um, flowering and fruiting patterns of different trees around their village in the forest areas. It's about wildlife, where they've seen the wildlife. There's also data about how do people use the forest? What do they go into the forest for? What are they collecting? And uh, what are they bringing back from the forest? on a daily basis. Keystone has been the agency that has trained the barefoot ecologists and has also managed the data in many ways. Major outcomes to this project, I would say, was um, one that the communities started to um, feel that you know they were part of the conservation process. This was also one way that they themselves and also the forest department started to feel that okay, this is a method to participate in conservation. A lot of times, more emphasis is given on the rights, but if we actually have a protocol for the responsibilities that communities can show, then uh, it's a great way for people to be more positive about the FRA and see how important it is even for conservation. The way forward definitely is to get more people involved. CEPF funding has really been important to this uh, way into this project. You know, the fact that when we put out this proposal to them, this was something that we hadn't tried out. This was fairly new. But we, only when you have that support from somebody can you really go forward. We have been working with the uh, Kardar's indigenous community. Uh, they are endemic to this animal part. They are the one of the ancient tribal in Western Ghats. They are forest dwelling community. So they usually don't practice agriculture. Uh, the private ownership of land for them is very uh, up to limited to very few cents. They live in their settlements, but half of the year they will be in the forest. And they depend more on fishes uh, and uh, honey, black dammer for their uh, livelihood and living. In 1988, we, have, we had a forest policy where this all the right, right on land, right on resources has to be settled for the community. The coming of the Forest Right Act itself recognized right of the all the indigenous people in India on their individual right, that means their right on the uh, personal property and the community rights. So they can claim which area traditionally they are using or depending on. That area is called Community Forest Resource or CFR. But at the same time, the CFR vests their responsibility into the Grama Sabhas. They are the authority to protect and conserve through sustainable use of these forest resources. That means they have given a responsibility also along with the right to enjoy the resources and they become one of the authority with the forest department. Their practices are the one of the key to have this conservation in action. Involving community in conservation and monitoring would be the cheapest method to mitigate or monitor climate change. Hornbills are one of the rainforest species. They need big natural hollows to nest. So hornbill is an indicator of a good forest. They are also an example of human living in harmony with the a very rich forest ecosystem. So we worked with the community, especially this Kadar indigenous people, to monitor the hornbill nest and monitor the rainforest. We moved from scientific monitoring to ecological monitoring, accepting 
their knowledge is also an important point of monitoring. We empowered them to use some scientific technologies including GPS and monitoring protocols uh, in local language. So instead of going to the forest for consumption, especially for those resources they are threatened, they go for observe to what, hap what is happening to that thing. And for that, the forest department is providing some incentives and now it becomes a regular program. It is very important for us to have a support from an international organization. Basically, whatever we are doing, doing an experiment, usually the system don't support for this kind of experiment. So CEPF supported us. And also, when we came out of some of the answers and some models, so the CPF background also supported to get us our visions, our uh, result into the policy level. That is one of the biggest achievement uh, because of the CEPF support we had and also for the indigenous community of the state. Through the work of these and other organizations, the role of indigenous tribal groups in conservation of the Western Ghats is being increasingly appreciated. Along with this appreciation is coming formal recognition of their rights to use and conserve forest resources and revival of traditional ecological knowledge and customary practices. The Western Ghats are as notable for their linguistic and cultural diversity as they are for their biological diversity. It is time to recognize that these two dimensions are indivisible and to search for solutions that foster both. To this goal, CEPF's grantees have been pointing the way.